here we go big video detailed video it might be lengthy but lots of information today we're going to be doing our first drive and impression some aggressive driving with our brand new personal 2024 7 generation mustang gt and we're going to try to answer is this just a reskinned s550 or is it all new let me know down in the comments what do you think about this as we go through the video but sit back buckle up let's take a drive let's go take a look at the exterior a little bit of the interior of the all-new s650 my personal car guys this is all coming from an ownership perspective we're not just some guy taking this thing around the block behind a dealership we're going to live with this car for a long time i'm going to be able to share the journey with you all the good all the bad everything about 2024 and up seventh generation mustang gt but guys here we go and it's actually interesting a friend of mine jack determined veteran on youtube he pointed out you got sn new wedge s197 then it goes to the s550 so a big jump in numbers but with this car we went from s550 to s650 so that kind of tells in the title itself that this is just an evolution of the s550 it's not supposed to be a clean sheet build however every single as we know body panel on this car has has been revamped retouched it is really just an evolution of the old but in all good ways and i got to tell you every single thing about this car is vastly better than the s550 stay with me we'll discuss a little bit more about that what i mean by that so yes the car weighs more but you guys can see that it's got massive brakes. There's like GT350 size brakes, they're huge. Okay, so you've got bigger sway bars, you've got more tech, you've got this, you've got that. So the car might weigh slightly more than the S550, but for good reason. Nobody wants to talk about that. They're just like, oh, it's a heavy pig, but nobody's really discussing why. There's a lot of things that we found underneath of the car. Guys, go check out the card up above or the description down below. We put this thing on a lift and explored underneath of the car to see what was different, and we found quite a few things. So I would definitely go check out the video. I think you'll be very interested, but we're gonna keep this one as detailed as possible, driving a review, just a little exterior walk around just to get things started, guys. But loving the performance package. It looks really great. Look at that shot right there. That's the money shot, right? freaking there guys that looks so good look at this body line right there i love it so this car reminds me a little bit of s550 and s197 in a way kind of into one but i hated the car in social media until i saw it in person and i just want to emphasize and stress that you got to go spend some time with one of these in person take it for a drive and find some curvy roads okay some back roads just don't take a couple of right hand turns behind a dealership you got to stretch this thing's legs to be able to find out what they're all about love what ford has done with the chassis that we already have everybody loved the s550 arguably one of the best mustangs ever made so Ford just evolved it a little bit into what we have now, hence S550 to S650. A clean sheet build would have been a whole different nomenclature, okay? Ford did a very good job of the back end. I was not really a fan of the taillights or the rear diffuser in videos, kind of like you're watching right now, but I'm telling you in person, it will change your mind. Let's jump into the interior real quick and we'll get on with our driving review. Let's go. Again, everybody comparing these to the S550 and they would be sadly mistaken. The seats are actually different. They are different. They're wider and the bolstering is more aggressive. We actually measured the inseam here and they are a little bit wider, about a half inch compared to the outgoing S550. And this bolster section right here actually comes out about a half inch further as well. Obviously interior is different and all new. All right, let's get some AC going real quick. All right, see everything come to life. 
So now that we're here looking at screens, this was a big concern of mine. The iPads on the dash, it looks unfinished, it looks this, it looks that. It's intrusive, and I'm gonna tell you guys, no, it's not. I was concerned about the same thing, and I'm gonna tell you in person, so the camera is right at my eyes, and this is my visibility here. So you see completely over all of this, okay? So it's very BMW. Nobody complains about the BMW, but for whatever reason, they like to talk trash about this or there's a lot of concern about it. And I'm gonna tell you, everybody wants more tech. Everybody says they want more tech. And then Ford gives it to us and then people complain and I don't get it. Here you got wireless CarPlay, Android Auto, everything like your maps. You got the big screen here. I mean guys, this is where you wanna be. This is absolutely amazing. And uh, I get it, it's American muscle, but hey guys, this is the future and we're evolving. So let's get with the program. Let's continue on seeing these Mustangs that we love so very much continue on in the direction of the future, okay? Instead of seeing them get killed off like the Camaros and the Dodge Challengers and everything else. Let's appreciate what Ford is doing and support them if we can. And of course, this is a 401A which comes standard with the Bang & Olsen. We used to have an eight inch sub in the back and now we have a 10 in the trunk. I'll show you that real quick. If you didn't know, now you do. All right, so of course we got hood struts and everything. Gen 4 Coyote, we're not gonna go over these two things. They've been beat to death on the internet. What I'm gonna tell you is that, yeah, things are moved around. Uh, this is kind of sad to see that we do have the strut tower brace, but Ford cheaped out on us and didn't give us a like plaque here. So you have to go aftermarket for that. That's just kind of upsetting. I don't really know why they did that. I mean, but whatever, I guess Ford's on a budget. But anyway, what we do have here is a fuse box and it's integrated with Power terminals, okay, and then you've got a ground right here. So no more taking that stuff apart and losing your little screws. Let's get on the road, guys. Let's go for a drive. First things first, we are in a manual transmission. So why back to a manual? And honestly, it's gonna come down to, yes, tuning is not available yet. It's gonna be coming at some point. We know that, but until that happens, I wanted to have some fun. And there's uh, really arguably no better way to do that than to roll your own gears. And also, it's going to pave the way into the future of this build. Go ahead and get into our custom mode. I love Ford. Thank you so much. You probably watched a video of mine or two, but I really appreciate you finally putting the drive modes on the steering wheel. I've been talking about that for like four or five years now. So, um, really happy to see that. It's all the little things in this car that really make it different, but let's get going. It's a lot of fun. So the MT82 is a little bit better, a little bit different than before. So I drove some automatic 2024s and then I drove a couple, including this one, MT82s. And I thought that it was a big enough change that I was willing to go back to a manual. So there's that. And like I said, it's gonna pave the way, the direction for the future build of this car. And it's gonna be more turn-based and more handling. Yes, we're gonna chase speed and power whenever we can, when it's available, but until then, we're gonna maximize, the plan is to maximize the foundation that all of that power eventually is going to ride on. So suspension, chassis stiffening, all those things. Speaking of chassis, all right, so S550 chassis, but like we discovered in the last video, when we got underneath the car and saw the things that were different, things are just a little bit tighter. Well, actually a lot tighter. push the car a little bit through these turns and see how composed this new Mustang really is. So I really wanted to put the miles on the car, that way I can give you an honest opinion. I didn't want to just get in this car and be like, oh yeah, it's so much greater because we got the screens and the tech and this, that, and the other. No, I wanted to really understand the car before I made a video about it. That way I can tell you truthfully, is this better or not? So let's get up here, do some little tight turns Let's talk about it. But this is a non magna ride car. Performance package is no magna ride. Let's give some gas and go through this. All right, here we go. Diving in. Trying to carry some speed. And we're doing really well. Brakes a little bit. Tight, tight, tight. No gas. Oh man. So, so much fun. And traffic right in front of me. We'll do that again. 
again. But I gotta say that things are definitely better. Things are definitely a little bit tighter. Uh, the tires do help, so we're back on a different piece here than we had before, but it seems to stick and hold pretty well in the turns. The steering is a little bit lighter in comparison to an S550. However, we do have a new steering shaft inside of this car, and it makes for a more direct response. Uh, hang on. Really maximizing grip, okay? so. A lot going on with this car. Yes, happy to report that turning um, is, is sharper, it's more direct, it feels better. The whole thing about these cars is they just feel a lot better. So it's definitely a fast improvement over the S550. So if you're on the fence about the S550 or 650, I mean, tuning aside, because like we said, that's gonna come at some point, but just the way the car feels, it does feel more composed. It really does, it's really good. A little bit about the weight. So you got bigger brakes, you got more going on back there. You have a whole different uh, rear caliper. It's now Brembo and they've moved the parking brake combined with the drift brake, which we may or may not use, but they've moved that off of that caliper. So there's things like that. The rotors, guys, remember, it's we got bigger brakes and nobody's talking about this and I wish that they would. So bigger brakes and things like that aid in track performance. but. There is rotational mass there, okay? So when you go bigger like that, you're introducing more rotational mass. But the trade-off is you can stop through the turns and corners faster, okay? So you can carry more speed into the turn, all right, and brake later, and then therefore creating a better lap time. We have different sway bars inside of this car compared to what we had before and I believe that they are the same part number, correct me if I'm wrong, as the dark horse. So very interesting there. So a lot of bang for the buck performance wise. Now yes there's some engine internals and some other coolers and stuff like that on the dark horse that kind of may add some value if you're into that kind of thing. But for this one having active exhaust and comparing that to the horsepower of the dark horse being 14 horsepower difference i didn't see the reason to go to the dark horse me personally for what i'm going to use the car for now everybody's going to be out there going fast and straight line we've done that before we've told that story but what we've never done is built something that will really handle well and i think that the mustang gt will be the good platform to do it on because it's going to be more relatable compared to a dark horse that you know only a handful of people can afford plus the dealer markup, yada yada. Let's go fly out, let's do a pull. test out the uh, traction control or the launch control rather I really want to test that so how well are we gonna stick in this cooler weather I don't know but we're gonna give it a junior varsity try and see what happens so let's do that I have advanced track all the way off I'm at a dead stop I'm gonna floor it. I'm not an expert driver by any means, but the car kept me safe, so 
Good job, Ford. Appreciate that. So sitting at a red light, we're gonna get up here and do launch control again one more time. It was a lot of fun. Let's see if we can do it even better. Okay, so, but anyway, let's talk real quick, just briefly. So the chassis is tighter, more composed. So big improvements over the S550. The chassis is definitely improved upon. Uh, handling is definitely better. The, perf per the performance package this year is uh, like way better than before, honestly. Um, things inside of here, so the heated steering wheel, heated uh, seats work way better. They're way hotter. The cooling, the cooled seats work way better too, like way better. Um, the radio, the stereo with the Bang & Olsen, way better than it was before. It's a lot clearer, it's a lot louder, and uh, a little bit more bassy. Um, the driving experience of this car, the shifter uh, is definitely better. It's not perfect. It's still a body-mounted shifter, so we're probably going to upgrade that at some point. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but things are definitely tighter, more refined, and evolved over the S550. Engine feels good, feels very powerful. Okay, it's very linear. Um, we do have different cams, different internals, and things like that inside of this Gen 4 Coyote, so it's not just a slightly upgraded Gen 3. There's actually a lot going on. So the tuning, because we can't tune these cars yet, but as far as the Ford tuning in this car, it's actually pretty good. So you can feel that they've taken the timing down low away, and they kind of give it back to you gradually, so I guess that's to keep people, you know, from hitting things and losing, losing control. Um, I, 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 I will say that, yeah, you can feel the nannies, but as far as up top, the car pulls like a freight train. I mean, it definitely, definitely feels really solid, really good. So I think that once tuning becomes available on these, guys, I mean, I think that we're going to see some really impressive stuff, honestly. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that will come very soon. But let's get up here and do some launch control. Let's go. So we've had some fun on the back roads. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this all new 2024 Mustang GT? Is it your cup of tea? Is it your flavor or is it not? But I'm loving it though. I think there's so much that has been approved upon over the S550 that I think that personally it is worth it. And when tuning becomes available, we're gonna get that done too and then we're gonna start going really fast. But guys, this is it. In a nutshell, let's wrap it up. I love the car. So let me know in the comments real quick, what do you think about this all new generation Mustang GT? This is just the beginning. This is just the start of this all new adventure with our seventh generation 2024 Mustang GT. Make sure you subscribe. We're gonna be doing a lot of things with this car. So it's free and not much this day and age is. Down below, click and turn your notification bells on so you stay up to date with the videos. But I digress guys. Let me know again what you think about this all new generation Mustang. Type down in the comments comments let's have a conversation until next video because we have big things planned so definitely don't miss out on videos with that said i'll see you guys in the next one god bless all of you take care have a great day goodbye